Welcome to labminutes.com. In this video, we will look at two advanced features of DMVPN, the first one being QoS, and the second is to how to limit the spoke-to-spoke -spoke creation to just some interesting traffic. So we took uh, the previous lab, three router labs, and modified slightly with router R1, R2, and R3, with R2 and R3 being the spoke routers and R1 being the hub. At each spokes, we'll have two slash 24 subnets, as shown in the diagram, and Behind R1, the hub, we have switch one loopback as our test subnet. So the whole DMVPN network has already been built. And let me just show you what we have configured so far already. Here in R2, we'll actually start with R1. At R1, you can see there's EAGRP on the tunnel one that peers with R2 and R3, as well as the backend switch one. So to show IP and HRP, we see two dynamic map mapping entries that belongs to R2 and R3. So jumping to R2, show IP EIGRP neighbor. And here's the peer to R1. And if you look at the EIGRP routing table, here are the two subnets that came from the hub, and here's the other two that came from the spoke R3 subnets. Okay, just to show that, that we currently have connectivity, we're going to ping the 3.0, so it's from loopback. with the NHRP phase three or DMVPN phase three. You can see the subnet entries being created and the R2 NHRP table. Okay, so all's good. We are able to establish spoke to spoke tunnel. And again, just to prove that, we do trace route to the R3 loopback zero and all it takes is just one hop instead of going through R1. So here is our spoke to spoke tunnel. So you can see that by default, any kind of spoke to spoke traffic will bring up a spoke to spoke tunnel. What if that's not what you really want? Because every spoke to spoke tunnel is, might uh, create a load on the router and the spoke routers. So what you want is to limit the, the spoke-to-spoke tunnel create, creation to just certain interesting uh, traffic. For example, let's take a look at our diagram here. Let's assume that L0, uh, loopback 0 and R2 and R3 is just data subnet, and loopback 1 and R2 and R3 are the voice subnet. So you might say that we want the spoke-to-spoke -spoke tunnel to be created just for the voice traffic because I don't want it to go through the R1 for an extra hop before it hits R3. So well, I don't really care about the data, so the data can go through the hub. So in order to do that, first you need to create an access list. And again, let's assume that you have a nicely separated subnet between your voice and data, like we have here in our lab. So first we're gonna go and create access list just to match the, the, the traffic that you want to be considered interesting. And here we're just going to do access list 100, permit IP. And, and in our lab here, we're just going to do loopback 1 to loopback 1. 255, 162.16.34.0, 255. OK. Next, you, you get under the tunnel interface. And the command that you want is IP and HRP interest. Here you can see none, which basically stops everything from creating a spoke to spoke tunnel, or you can associate an access list to it. Okay. Now let's see. Currently we only have a static mapping. Let's try and ping. 1633. So let's try loop back zero to loop back zero. Okay, so you can ping successfully. You can trace. 
and it takes a little detour to R1, and it doesn't matter how many times you traced it, it would not build a spoke to spoke tunnel. Now, if you try to do a trace for loopback 1 to loopback 1, so going from loopback 1 to 1634.1, try once and then twice. You can see the second time, let's just take one hop, and that's when the spoke to spoke tunnel was already created. And if you look at our access list, 100, they can see there's one match. Okay, so anything that's not, that does not match your access list will not cause the spoke to spoke tunnel to be created. Okay, and here's how crypto IPsec tunnel. 4.5 is R2 and 4.9 is R3. Okay. So that would become very useful if you have a very large network and you do not want every spoke to build the tunnel, direct tunnel to every other spokes for any kind of traffic. If you want to take a step further, you can actually set Okay, now not, not, not only the traffic has to match your access list, I only also want certain amount of traffic to be observed before I will start building that tunnel. So what you can do under tunnel 1, you can do IP and HRP use, and here this is where you can specify how many packets that needs to be seen before the tunnel will be created. Just for our testing purposes, I'm just going to do three. So in your case, you need to pick the number that makes sense to you. Okay, let's clear the screen. Then do show IP and HRP. Make sure we only have one static mapping. If you ping 172, actually let's try trace. 172.16.34.1 sourcing the back one. Okay. Here show IP and HRP. Here you can see the entry for 34.1 is still show up as incomplete with no next top. And so far this cache hits of three. So if you do it one more time so that we have enough interesting traffic. And you can see it's just take one hop. And if we go in and do show command again, you can see now that entry that we saw previously has been converted or updated with the physical IPs of R3. Okay, so you can use that command, IP and HRP use to define how much traffic you want the router to see before it start initiating a spoke to spoke tunnel. Okay, so the next features we're gonna look at is QoS. With the release of 12422T, there is a feature call. Let me show you real quick here map group so it's IP and HRP map group is the commands what it does is usually since you only have one tunnel interface to deal with at the hub if you do the conventional way with the service policy command you can pretty much only attach or associate a single policy map to the interface which means the same policy map will be applied to all of the spokes what the IP and HRP groups, map groups, allow you to do is to define a different sets of policy group or QoS policies per spoke types or spoke groups. So you can create multiple spoke groups and then have a multiple or different QoS policy associated to it. So let's assume in our scenario that we have two spoke group here, a type, spoke type 1 and type 2 for R2 and R3. So now on R1, we, we are going to create a two different QoS. So first we start off class map 
just going to do ICMP, so match protocol ICMP. Wait for that to come back. And then we are going to create two different policy map, one per spoke groups. So policy map, call it two spoke one. Here we're going to match our ICMP traffic. And we're going to police it to the lowest you can do, which is 8,000. Then conform, transmit, exceed, drop. Okay, so that's one. We're going to do the second one with policy map to spoke to. Again, matching ICMP type traffic. But here instead, we're going to police, we're going to give it a little more bandwidth. So we're going to police 64,000. So conform, transmit, exceed, drop. Okay, so we do show run policy map. So here's our T policy map. Next, we go under the tunnel interface on the hub R1 and we associate it with the group, map group. We're going to call it spoke one. Next, we have serve policies and direction output towards the spoke. And we're going to map it to, to spoke one. We're going to do the exact same thing and call that spoke2. Okay, the command was accepted. Now we need to hop to the spoke site and define what group the spoke belongs to. So IP, we want R1 to, to be a member of spoke1, so that would be NHRP group spoke one I'm going to copy that to R3 instead we'll have that as spoke two okay so now let's get back to R1 and see what has changed after we've issued those commands to the spoke so now I can see when you do show IP and HRP, we have additional information as far as which group the spoke is a member of. So here 1.2R2 is a member of spoke1 group and 1.3 is a member of spoke2 group. So now we're going to do some test ping from the switch1 in the back. We're going to try to ping the subnet on both R2 and R3 and look at the result. So first we're going to ping so let's say 216.22.1. Let's repeat. 100. So I can see we, we have got a regular ping drop, which most of the time indicates it's the QoS or it's something is rate limits the ICMP, and we did by the use of the policing command. Now, if you try to ping 33. You can see the ping drop happens less frequently and that's because for the spoke group 2 we have reassigned it or reallocated a bigger or higher bandwidth on R1. So to check that you can you show policy map I can hear here you see there's a additional option with multipoint and you can just say output since we only have one tunnel and here's a tunnel one that maps to 4.5 which is R2 policy two spoke one we have a hundred packets uh, seen because we ping hundred times 93 of those packet was transmitted and seven of those were dropped. Okay. So now if you scroll down, here's the policy for spoke two. That's a, uh, that was applied to R3. Again, 100 packets with the bandwidth of 64 kilobits per second. 97 of those packets were transmitted and three were dropped. 
So here you can see you can come up with two or multiple QoS policies for multiple type of spoke sites that you have, even though you only have uh, a single tunnel interface to configure it. So that's it for the two advanced DMVPN features. Thank you for watching labinets.com. I'll see you guys in the next video.